Hello everyone, welcome to the Reds Take. Let's get started. Uh, so there's a lot of um, things I want to go over, but let's start off with my one phrase as I do every beginning of the week in the NFL season. I have my one phrase describe an NFL game and then a summary, quick summary for each NFL game. So let's start with the Thursday night one. So the New York Giants versus the Washington football team. No, no order in the courtroom. On the final drive, the Giants had an offside they gifted Washington a first down, and then another offside on the winning field goal attempt, which Washington made them pay. Um, so Joe Judge, his job as a head coach is to make sure his team is in order. You know, as like a judge in the courtroom, the judge's job is to make sure that the court is in order. There's no chaos going on type of thing. And unfortunately, Joe Judge didn't do that. He, um, what makes it worse, especially on the field goal penalty, is that Judge Judge, like his specialty, his special teams. That's what he did under Bill Belichick. That's special teams. So the fact that there are special team excuse on him does not look good. You know, Daniel Jones didn't have the greatest games, but he wasn't bad this time compared to the first game of the season. He wasn't as bad. You know, um, yeah, defense had issues against a backup quarterback and Taylor Heineke. Only one sack and tackle for loss, and he gave up over 400 yards. Um, but the blame here goes to Joe Judge. Um, despite being plus one in the Trevor margin, 11 penalties is not a sign of a disciplined team. And if Joe Judge wants to, you know, not be on the hot seat by the end of the year, he needs to kind of get that figured out. Cincinnati versus Chicago. Perfect timing. Mostly everyone in the media, fans, all that want Justin Fields to start. And since Andy Dalton got hurt, Fields got his chance. Now, did he make him some rookie mistakes? Of course he did. He's a rookie. But I think since they got the win, um, hopefully um, Fields has done enough to maybe seal that job. Now, I know Nagy's saying right now that um, Andy Dalton, when healthy, is a starter. But let's say he's out for three games. And Fields just goes off those three games, and it's gonna be really hard to pull him back if Dalton's healthy. So we'll kind of see how that goes. Um, Houston versus Cleveland. Baker was cooking. Besides the one pick, um, Baker was super efficient. Nineteen twenty-one touchdown, rush touchdown. Um, got hurt on the on t- on a tackle after that interception he made, um, but then afterwards it seemed like he played even better. Um, throughout the rest of the game. In the second half, the Browns, you know, played better in general because they finally started running the ball. Now, And not only running the ball, but also running efficiently as well. Also, um, helped that Tyrod Taylor got injured towards the end of the first half, which sucks for Tyrod Taylor once again, but it shouldn't be a long-term injury. Um, so, by the way, for Houston, I mean, if Tyrod Taylor can come back in a couple games, I mean, I'm still not saying they're going to win a lot of games, but it looks like at least this year they're going to be a lot more competitive than I originally thought they were going to be. Rams versus Colts. Wentz is wincing again. Once again, no surprise here, Wentz gets injured. After Rams take the three-point in the fourth with a few minutes left, Jacob Easton, the backup, has to come in, and he ends up throwing a pick. Game over. So I know the Colts needed someone at quarterback with Philip Rivers retiring, but I was one of the few who said this was a very risky move for them since he's so injury-prone. In fact, I think you could put him up there as one of the most injury-prone quarterbacks in the league history, if not maybe the very top. Like, for me, that's he's easy up there. That's how bad it is. Um, so, even if this is, it sounds like he may not be out long term. Um, he, he sprained both ankles. It sounds like it's not long term, but especially if you don't make the playoffs this at the end of the season, like I'd look for another option at quarterback. Buffalo versus Miami. Get Dr. Watson. One of the big concerns with Tua, besides his abilities, is he's so injury prone. Got hurt in college a lot. Now hurt once again. I um, mean, he may be out for a while on this one. So if I am Miami here, you say two is your guy. But if he's going to be out for a long period of time, just go ahead and trade for Deshaun Watson. Rumors already came out. You were looking into that. Just go ahead and basically confirm those rumors and get Deshaun Watson. Now, obviously, if you get him and he can't play this year, then that's an issue. But if he's eligible to play, then go get one of the best QBs in the league in, in Watson. The Patriots versus the Jets. I see Ghost too. So Darnold was not the only one to see ghosts as a rookie against the Patriots. Wilson must have saw plenty of ghosts because he had four picks, um, and three of them were his fault. Um, besides those picks, though, Wilson, you know, wasn't actually that bad. Um, you know, had some good passes and all that. But man, hopefully, hopefully he learned from this though. 
Because, and again, I'm not freaking as much as everyone else because this is what Bill Belichick does to rookie quarterbacks. Like, we all love Justin Herbert. Zero touchdowns, two picks last year in, in his first game against Belichick, and the, and the team lost 45 zip. So, like, it happens. Um, San Francisco versus Philly. Out of the Philly specials. So, the Eagles tried the Philly special that worked in the Super Bowl on a fourth down and goal at the three yard line instead of, you know, getting the easy three points. That failed. The Eagles had also a wide receiver that unknowingly stepped out of bounds barely and went back in to prevent a touchdown. And then also, um, Eagles had a field goal blocked. So they just had plenty of plays to where they could have, you know, just made those few plays. They actually could have gotten upset here in the win. So, again, this is like Houston here where I still feel like they're not going to win a lot of games, but looks like they can actually be pretty competitive here. Las Vegas versus Pittsburgh. Doubt not Carr. After seeing Monday night and now this game, we got to stop down Derek Carr, in my opinion. And seriously consider him right like 10th, like right in the top 10 QBs right now. Now, you could doubt John Gruden, I do. You could doubt GM John Mayock, I do. You could doubt some of their personnel, whether it's, you know, offensive line or secondary, I do. And the fact that Derek Carr didn't even have Josh, running back Josh Jacobs in this game, and he was able to lead his team 1 p.m. Eastern kickoff in Pittsburgh, all the way in Pittsburgh to when it gets a good Pittsburgh defense. Now, T.J. Watt got injured, but still, like, to do against Pittsburgh, that's pretty remarkable. So good for Carr. But, again, we've seen last year, you know, Vegas start 5-2 and two last year before the epic collapse. So now they got to sustain this time. But so far, so good. And as far as Steelers fan go, I mean, you better hope T.J. Watt's growing injury is not too dangerous. Otherwise, you're kind of screwed. New Orleans versus Carolina. Matt's new rules. Man, head coach Matt Rule for Carolina is really known for his college days of, you know, establishing a culture. Like, that's his mantra, you know. I mean, yeah, he knows some offense. Yeah, he knows some defense. But, like, that's kind of his mantra. That culture setter, culture builder. And that's what he's doing in Carolina right now. That defensive draft that they, you know, they used every pick on a defense player last year. That's working out pretty well right now. And then for using mostly every pick, besides J.C. Horton, using mostly every pick on offense this year. That's working out so far. Christian McCaffrey's healthy. That's been a, a very big difference. But also, while Darnold hasn't done too much things different than Bridgewater did last year, he's done a little bit more than Bridgewater, which has kind of been the secret recipe. You know, don't turn over much. Just be the game manager. I can go do a couple deep balls or cool passes when you need to, but otherwise just stay within the system. You use our offensive weapons around you that we got more of, basically. So, and also, so I feel like, while I'm still not going to put Carolina playoff pitcher quite yet, it looks like they could be getting there. We'll see. Um, also, Jameis Winston reverted back to his old ways. Um, you know, only 11, 22, 50 percent completion, 111 yards, two interceptions, one rush touchdown. It does not get any easier against the Patriots defense, who will make you pay for mistakes. So, I think we what we saw against the Pack, Packers may be more bad Packers than good Saints. Denver versus Jacksonville, do or die on deep balls. For some reason, the Broncos' game plan this one was to do as try as many deep balls as possible. Deep balls mean 20 plus yards. And and they did this with the QB who is not only not the best at completing them, not known for his deep ball um, charisma, if you will. So, of course, it didn't complete a lot of them, which got them behind the chains a lot. So Denver didn't score as much as they could have. But since the Jags are so bad at defense, you know, it didn't matter in the end. Also, Lawrence, you know, had another two interceptions. So Lawrence and Wilson both have five picks in their first two games. I know they're in a rebuilding teams, but throwing the ball away most times is actually an okay thing to do. Even Robert Saw, the Jets head coach, say being boring is okay. So, like, hopefully they kind of learn that. Otherwise, it'll be a very long season for them. Minnesota versus Arizona. Defense fell off the cliff. So, I'm not sure what – I know Cliff Kingsbury is off it's a guy, but I'm not sure what went wrong with his defense there. I mean, they were so down against Tennessee's offense game one, and now – I know the Vikings have a lot of, you know, offense weapons a lot, but they just, you know, completely, you know, screw the pooch there and almost, you know, gave up winning field goal. So if you're Arizona against a tough division, you got to play better defense than that if you want to make the playoffs. Atlanta versus Tampa Bay. That's more like it. After having so many miscues for the Buccaneers last week, Buccaneers performed way better on offense this time around. Now, the defense first half had his issues, but then they eventually fixed it in the second half. So the Bucks rams matchup this upcoming Sunday will be very interesting. Dallas versus the Chargers. Um, tables have turned. So just like against Tampa, 
the Cowboys, you know, they had a, they had the better turnover margin advantage and played, you know, cleaner football. But the difference was this time Dak got the last shot for the winning field goal. And as we see, that ended up being the way to go there is, you know, Zerline made this kicks on like in the first game. So good for the Cowboys there. They needed that win, especially with all the players that's been injured for them. Tennessee versus Seattle. You had one job. Defending Titans 101. Contain Derrick Henry. If you contain like Arizona did last week, if you contain him, you will win. I know Titans have Tannehill who can run. And then they have, you know, A.J. Brown and Julio Jones as receiving threats. So when you have those type of weapons of threats, it's hard to load the box. But allowing them to dominate on the on the ground is not the answer for Seattle's defense there. And because of the Seattle's collapse, who's, you know, up by two touchdowns in the third quarter, I mean, Seattle right now is in last place because of that in their division. So we'll see how Seattle rebounds. Kansas City versus Baltimore. Now it's a rivalry. People say Mahomes and um, Lamar Jackson is, is a rivalry, but then some say there's not because Lamar Jackson hasn't won any games against Mahomes. But now Jackson got his first win. I mean, thanks to two, no, two turnovers in the second half with the Chiefs, I'm going to credit the Ravens for taking advantage of them and, and for going out fourth and one when it, they weren't even past midfield yet. Which, by the way, I actually love that the coach trusted Lamar to make that decision for himself. But then also... I love that they went for the decision, and I agreed with that decision, not because they ended up converting it, but because I felt like if they would have punted away, despite having no timeouts, because of the way the Chiefs are, I felt like they would have easily just marched right back down the field for a winning field goal. So the fact that they did that was very impressive. Um, and this is a very important run for the Ravens here, in a loaded AFC where you all need the wins you can come by, especially with all the injuries that they have, this is a very important win for them. And by the way, I know the Chiefs have played very two good opponents so far. But their defense is a mess so far. They need to get that fixed if they want to win a Super Bowl. Um, so that's my podcast for today. And please subscribe to my channel to learn about me. Thank you very much, and you all have a wonderful day.